Hi there, today we're going to be talking about smart plugs. Love them or hate them, these little guys are one of the easiest way to get into your smart home journey. Today we're going to talk about how to choose the right smart plug, then what you can use smart plugs for, and then of course what to watch out for. Now the ones that most people pick up first are the two-year or smart life based smart plugs. Now these are a good starting point, but you can quickly reach the limitations of these plugs. So smart plugs come in a range of different form factors. You get single ones like this, then you get larger ones that include USB outputs as well, and then you get full multi-plug versions. So the first thing you need to consider when when powering a device from a smart plug is you need to have a look at the expected power supply of this device. So if we look at this specific smart plug, it can only handle 10 amps, 2,400 watts at 230 to 240 volts. Now, the big thing to remember is that, yes, it's saying it can do 2,400 watts, but I certainly wouldn't be putting a heater, for example, onto this device. The reason is that when you turn the heater on, there can be a flash of energy that will actually burn the plug out. So I would only control low power devices like lamps, radios, things like that, that are not going to consume anywhere near this sort of power or you might be running into problems. The next thing about smart plugs is whatever the device is that you're controlling, it needs to switch on automatically when power is supplied to it. For example, this little diffuser, in order to power it on, I actually have to press this little button before it will actually turn on. So a smart plug is not going to be able to power this. So these little plugs are really easy to connect up to the Smart Life app and you can control them remotely or via some sort of automation. They also connect up to many of the home voice control systems such as the Amazon one and you can either control them via voice or automations within these systems. Now even though the voice assistants do offer a fair amount of automation between different devices, I wanted to move to the next level and so I decided to go to Home Assistant. And once I'd gone to Home Assistant, I started realizing the limitations of connecting to these Wi-Fi connected plugs. So I've started looking at local control plugs. And when it comes to local plugs, there are a couple of options we can go. The first one is we can look at a protocol called Zigbee, which is a local network that you set up on something like Home Assistant and allows you to communicate with these plugs via the local Zigbee network. The other option you've got is to buy plugs that can connect directly into the Home Assistant system. And these are things like the Atom plugs, which have an ESP Home software already loaded, so these will run automatically. The other way that you can connect your smart plugs to things like Home Assistant is via Matter. This is a protocol that is developed in order to try and connect all the different smart home devices with the different hubs on the market. Anyway, that's all for me now. Look at some of my other videos and you'll see the sort of things that I'm doing with Home Assistant. I'd love you to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye then.